but I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different. I want to show an example of me taking a look at a new stat block and one, analyzing how I think this creature should be played as a DM, but also to kind of do a quick and dirty encounter. So I'm gonna show you my screen and we're gonna go through it together. So here I have the encounter generator pulled up from D&D Beyond. I have done a CR of three to seven and I'm just going to scroll through and randomly pick one. So you can see I have just a whole bunch here. So I'm gonna close my eyes, I'm gonna start scrolling up and I'm gonna count down from three. So three, two, one, here we go. We are on the Black Abishai. So starting off, when I take a look at a stat block, I want to look at their stat curve. Now this is an idea that I've gotten from the Monsters Know, who if you are interested in what I do in this video, you're gonna love what the Monsters Know do. It's a blog where he analyzes the stat blocks and kind of tells you about how the creature's tactics are going to play out. So looking at the Black Abishai's spread, we look at the highest first. In this case, it's a combination of dexterity and wisdom, slightly leaning towards dexterity, but it's that odd amount. So, you know, it's 17 instead of 16, doesn't change anything mechanically, but it does just tell us a little bit of information. Taking a look at the next set, we have strength and constitution, and then we have intelligence near the bottom and charisma at the dead last. So I'll just kind of go through each and tell you kind of what they tell me. So strength tells me they are confident in hitting people. Simple as that. Dexterity is a wild card. It's kind of flexible. You have to read the rest of the stat block to know what dexterity is going to do. Because sometimes it's going to say, hey, this is a ranged character. Sometimes it's going to say it's hit and run, or sometimes it's just a pseudo strength. So dex is the one I kind of ignore until later. Constitution tells me how confident they are in staying in the fight. Intelligence, besides telling me that they're probably a wizard, it also tells me how they go about preparing. Intelligent creatures take time to prep. A really intelligent creature might take time to analyze their target by sending minions after them. They might plan traps. They might plan specific spells based off of the weaknesses that they've analyzed. The higher the intelligence, the more prep work has gone into either this combat directly or their environment. Intelligence can can be used to analyze people and try to find their weaknesses on the fly as well. And the vice versa is true as well. If they have a low intelligence, they don't spend any time preparing for the combat and they might just fall into it. Moving on to wisdom for me, wisdom is instinct. A high wisdom creature is going to instinctually know characters' weaknesses. It's also going to have a good sense of how the battle is going. It feels the moment when the advantage changes from it to the enemies and it's going to flee right away. So a high wisdom character is going to have a more accurate fight or flight instinct. And if you have a really high wisdom character, they can just kind of smell your weakness. They know that you're unprotected from their bite type thing. Moving on to charisma. Charisma is their influence on people around them. A high charisma character is going to have people that follow it religiously. A low charisma character is probably rocking it alone. And what's really cool is each charisma type kind of gives you a story. So a high charisma character who has proficiency in intimidation, for example, is kind of like a slave driver. They have people following them but they're following them because they're terrified. And that changes drastically from someone who is persuasive. That person has people who love following them. So it kind of creates a story just from that. So here with the Black Abishai, with Dex, we're the wild card, as well as high wisdom. So we have good instincts. We have low charisma. So we're going to probably be rocking this alone. We have decent intelligence and strength, but anything that's mediocre, you don't really build it around. You kind of build around your strengths and your weaknesses. So moving on from there, the next thing I'm going to take a look at right away is whether or not we have dark vision. We do have dark vision here. In fact, we have 120 feet of dark vision, meaning we are better with dark vision than normal. That tells us that we want to plan our attack for night. This creature doesn't want to be running around during the day. It wants to be running around during the night. And with 120 feet of dark vision, it can get within 65 feet of the party and analyze each of them before the party even knows they're there most of the time. Moving on from there, we look at the skills. We have stealth and perception. Again, this kind of gives me the vibe of a scout. We're able to go analyze the party, but we don't have the intelligence to analyze it. So this might be a servant who's going to go report for a higher intelligence creature. So if we're getting into the high CRs, I'm using this as a scout and a reporter. If we are kind of in those mid to low CRs, this is going to be a creature that's running solo and just kind of getting a feel for who it's going to bite first, essentially. Stealth, of course, means we want to ambush, which goes along with our dark vision. So this is an ambush predator, and that typically is something you'll see with these dex builds. As far as saving throws, we have dex and wisdom proficiency. That doesn't tell us too much, but the more we have, the more confident we are against spellcasters. This creature comes with damage resistances. We have cold, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical weapons. We have immunity to poison.
poison, fire, and acid damage as well. So we have quite the coverage. So what that's going to tell us is we're going to be looking out for those magical weapons. For example, if this was a higher intelligence creature with the same stat array, we might begin by trying to sneak into their rest site and steal their magic weapons so they don't have them when the fight breaks out. But as it stands, this creature doesn't fear normal weapons too much, but will be paying special attention to magical weapons or silvered weapons. So this paints a picture of who this creature fears. It's going to fear spellcasters who aren't targeting its saves or using the damage types that it enjoys taking, and it will not fear a spellcaster who is relying on those. As far as a marshal goes, it is looking for that magical weapon or silvered weapon. If they don't have that, it doesn't fear them basically at all. Next up is our communication type. We have telepathy out to 120 feet. We speak draconic and infernal. Now telepathy, what that tells me is that this creature is sometimes going to be rolling with allies and they can communicate and work together. Again, that's in the higher CRs where this is going to be a servant of someone far more powerful. But at those lower CRs, because it's going to be rolling solo, it's not going to have that telepathy isn't really going to come into play. It's not going to really communicate with the enemies. I get the feeling that this is a creature that wants to ambush before it wants to talk to you. So we kind of have an idea of what's happening before we even look at our features and our actions. We are an ambush predator. We have the ability to use darkness to our advantage. We know what we're strong against. We know what we're weak against. We know what we fear. We know what we're not going to fear. Taking a look, we have high wisdom, meaning that we know when the battle switches and we're going to retreat right away. Now, something kind of interesting to take into account with that retreat statement is that we are a devil. Devils don't die on the material plane. They just get sent back to hell. So we are kind of riskless as far as a combat goes. So you would be totally fair to have this creature fight to the death. However, that means the information it's gathered is wasted. That means it doesn't get in the second attempt for at least a good amount of time. So I still would think that the, the Black Abishai, a very opportunistic fighter, is going to want to retreat quickly if the battle sways to the opposite side. However, with this low intelligence, I don't see it particularly planning out this combat step by step. It's going to wait for dark. It's going to choose its first target and it's going to go. That's as complicated as its tactics would be in my mind. Now we're going to move on to our features. We come with Devil Sight, as all devils do, meaning that if we can create magical darkness, then we're going to have a significant advantage. So that's something we're going to want to look out for with all devils. Next up, we have magic resistance. So before I said we would have spellcasters that we're worried about, this tells us we are actually not worried about spellcasters almost at all. So that tells us our exact particular enemy that we don't want to be facing, and that's a magic weapon marshal. The Black Abishai is pretty happy to be fighting anybody else. Moving into our actions, we have multi-attack. We have one bite attack and two scimitar attacks. And the bite and scimitar attacks are just damaging attacks. They do acid, force, and piercing damage. So we have a wide array of the type of damages we do so we can dish out a lot of damage quite quickly. Next up on a recharge six, we have creeping darkness where we can cast the darkness spell within 120 feet of ourselves. We're going to want to cast that on our own scimitar probably and just have it surrounding us. That way our biggest enemy, those magic weapon marshals are going to have a much harder time hitting us. And finally, as a bonus action, we can take the height action. So as darkness is going to be a big piece of us, magical darkness, the darkness we attack in, and then we can have a bonus action hide. So we are going to use our turn to choose a target, hit them hard, and then retreat into darkness again and again and again and again. What our wisdom tells us is when they destroy our darkness, when they create a light environment, it's time to go. It's time to do a full retreat and hopefully get into darkness where we can teleport away. That's what the wisdom tells us. So probably levels seven and below, I'm using this as a single enemy encounter. Higher, this can start being an ambush squad that uses the darkness and the, the telepathy to work together to really hit the party hard. So the Black Abishai can really be used from tiers two and above, which tells me for a tier one encounter, it needs to be a role play encounter, show this creature beforehand, show it fighting somebody else, you know, foreshadow it. I thought this was a kind of a fun exercise. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is more of an educational piece to show you my own process of looking at a stat block for the first time. But I know there's a lot of flexibility in doing this. What I want to hear from you guys is what you would read from this stat block or anything I missed or anything else you look at. Another interesting thing would be how you analyze intelligence, charisma, and wisdom, you know, dex, con, strength, all of them. Let me know how you analyze them and what it tells you about the monster that you're running. Let me know in the comments down below. But other than that, have yourselves a fan freaking day, and I'll see you on the next one. Later.